Hello everyone, my name is Dylan and this is Vestiges of History, where we tell of storied lives. Today is no different. Now before I jump into this, I wanted to again thank my subscribers for being so patient with me as these videos come together. I do have several actual day jobs that require a lot of my attention. It's an absolute grind, but it's all worth it and I hope y'all can understand. This year, in 2024, it is going to be absolutely huge for this channel. You are going to witness things that you did not think were possible. <laughs> At least I didn't think were possible. And you guys are going to love it. I have so many great stories for you guys that I can't even fathom how fortunate I am to share them. Now, onto the history. Let me introduce you to Captain Kenneth Kyung Yap, a son of Hawaii and a veteran of 35 missions in the 8th Air Force in World War II. What do we have from the man to piece together his story? We have some U.S. Army collar devices, full-size pilot wings, an air cadet hat device, an air medal, and a distinguished flying cross. This super rad leather name tape that would have been sewn onto his flight jacket features his nickname, KK. But that's not all. We have his separation records from when he was transferred from enlisted to officer with some excellent information and some absolutely bonkers photography some of which appear to have been in an album at some point, along with some more ephemera, including his handwritten mission list, which gives us a glimpse at KK's time flying 17s over Germany. Kenneth Kyung Yap was born in Hawaii on 8 January 1917. He grew up in a family of seven children, all first-generation Chinese Hawaiian. His father, Wan, was born in China, and his mother, Lily, was born in Hawaii. The family owned and operated a grocery store and lived at 1600 Kamamalu, yes, Kamamalu Avenue in Honolulu. After graduating high school, Kenneth completed three years towards an engineering degree at University of California, Berkeley, Go Bears, and became a civil engineer and surveyor for the Pacific Bridge Company. He joined the U.S. Army Air Corps at Hickam Field on 5 November 1942 and completed advanced flight training on 2 November of 1943 out of Fort Sumner, New Mexico. Sometime in his early training, this photo was taken of him at Thunderbird Field in Glendale, Arizona, which is just a rad photo and was probably used by Army Air Corps Public Relations at the time. From there, he got his papers and was sent to join the 457th out of Wendover Field, Utah, and remained there in Phase 3 training with that unit until it began to transfer to England in early 1944. He would leave the U.S. to hop across the Atlantic, leaving on 20 June and arriving in the U.K. on 21 June 1944 as part of a replacement crew after D-Day. From here, I must absolutely recognize and thank the 457th Bomb Group Association for sharing and making the extensive history of the group and its activities exceedingly accessible on their website. Give it a look and share that history because it's one of the most complete and active veteran associations I've run across. You could spend hours on their website and not see everything that they have. Now, 2nd Lieutenant Yap was a co-pilot, which means that when he arrived at RAF Glatton, the 457's home base, there wasn't an aircraft available for him in the rotation as planes were issued to crews, and Lieutenant Yap was folded into an existing crew. The 457th was primarily tasked with strategic bombing during its war history, hitting the oil refineries at Merseburg several times. You know, if, if you'll humor me, I actually want to read out his mission list as he wrote them. Beginning in July, Munich, Augsburg, Schweinfurt, San Lo, San Lo again, Merseburg, Mersburg again. August, we have Chateaudun, Strasbourg, Nienburg, the Nantel Bridge in Paris on August 7th. Brest, Stuttgart, the Meuse River Bridge in Belgium. Weimar, Pinamunde, beginning in September. Ludwigshaven, Karlsruhe, Roland. And then later in September, September 17th, we have Nijmegen. We know what that's about. Soest. Munster, and then in October, Kassel, Köln, Stargard, Politz, Köln, Mannheim, Hanover, Hamburg, Bielefeld, and then in November, we have 
Frankfurt, Hauberg, Metz, and Freiburg. When you think about it, all the places the 457th were hitting are all rather famous in World War II history, and KK was there, just five miles above the ground. His first mission, as seen from his list, was Munich on 13 July 1944. He was Lieutenant Norman A. Irby's co-pilot. Nineteen ships from the 457th went up for that mission. The target was the Alec Aero Engine Works for the second day. We can see that their bomb load was a combination of four 500-pound general purpose bombs and six M17 incendiary bombs. The Germans can't work if their shop is on fire. I find this interesting because I recognize places like Augsburg, his second mission on 19 July. When I read that name on the list, I immediately thought of a lady I knew, Emmy Larkin. She was the widow of a late friend and fraternity brother of mine. His name was Horace Larkin a tank commander at the end of World War II in Europe. She was a war bride, and her family owned a bakery in Augsburg during the war. She told me many, many stories of living through these same bombings, and how her father was famous for making these elephant ears, the palm ears, the, the puff pastry. And for that mission, they were lucky there were no incendiary bombs that hit Augsburg. Just 10 500-pounder GPs. The two contexts struck me on the sending and receiving of hell. His third mission was Frankfurt, a place of terrific legend in the lore of the Air Force in World War II, a veritable flak city. For that mission, the bomb load is more intentional. 38 M47 incendiary bombs and five 1,000-pounder GPs. July 24th and 25th, Yap took part in the bombing of San Lo during Operation Cobra, the breakout from Normandy, for that mission, they carried 38 120-pound fragmentation bombs, purely for anti-personnel. For context, this is 1944. The Allies would win the war in less than a year, and Germany is almost on its knees after being bombed for the last two years. From the records of the 457th Association, the sorties going up had a relatively high survival rate, thankfully. This is illustrated in what the Association calls Schinner's Lists. The original mission boards brought back home at war's end by 457th personnel officer Captain John F. Shinners. This is the kind of stuff you never ever see, and this, incredibly, is available. The amount of detail is tremendous when reading these, and provides meaningful context to what the day-to-day -day missions were like. The Luftwaffe lost nearly all of its operational strength by early 1944. Units like the 457th dealt the final lasting blows to bring an end to the German war machine. In some of his missions, beginning in September 1944, such as the 457th mission over Nijmegen, Netherlands, Yap was co-pilot for Lieutenant Jack Mark's crew. On 20 October, Yap was promoted a first lieutenant per the base newspapers. He would occupy the number one seat as pilot in his final five missions, and later received the Distinguished Flying Cross in December of 1944. According to his records, his 35th and final combat mission was on 21 November 1944 for a raid over Freiburg. It's interesting to note that KK stayed back in the ETO while the rest of the 457th began shipping back to the United States in June and July 1945. Yap left the ETO for the States on 30 September of 45, arriving in Konis on 4 October. Later that month, he was transferred to the PTO and served with the 17th Tow Target Squadron of the 7th Fighter Wing. After completing the requisite number of missions, many pilots with very impressive records found themselves flying tow targets at aerial gunnery schools at war's end, which seems very incongruous and very risky, as there were several instances of planes being damaged and even worse, pilots being wounded or worse, killed while performing this work. Still, it's the Army. Where the army told you to go, you went. K.K. Yap was relieved from active duty on 21 May 1946. He would stay in California, work as a civil engineer, and live in San Fernando until his passing in 2005. Kenneth Yap was one of approximately 13,000 Chinese Americans who served in the Army and Navy during World War II, about 20% of all Chinese Americans in CONUS at the time. His decorations and citations include the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Air Medal with three Oak Leaf Clusters, the American Campaign Service Medal, the Asiatic Pacific Service Medal, the Presidential Unit Citation, the Europe Africa Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, or EAME Service Medal, and the World War II Victory Medal. 
The 457th Bomb Group holds campaign streamers for Air Offensive Europe, Normandy, Northern France, Rhineland, Ardennes, Alsace, and Central Europe. During its operational combat history, beginning on 21 February 1944 through 20 April 1945, the 457th flew 236 combat missions over five nations, par participating in the invasion of Normandy, Operation Market Garden, and the liberation of Paris, the tail end of Big Week, and the Battle of the Bulge. Thank you again to the 457th Bomb Group Association for maintaining an incredible historical repository and making it accessible to all. With Masters of the Air coming out, or actually out now, I wanted to offer this point of view of the war as it provides value in many ways. Sharing these stories is fun and enlightening, and I always come away learning something new. If you like what this channel is doing, please share, like, and subscribe. There is value in these stories, just like in your own. Please share this video where you think it will do the most good. And finally, as always, you never know who will tell your stories. Live a storied life.